action. So thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item 26. Yes, Commissioner's uh, tab 26 is an informational item, and Mr. Jonathan Weiner from Bosch uh, will talk about electric bicycles as an innovative method uh, to increase options available for active transportation. E-bikes um, open bicycle riding to many groups of people that may not have been able to ride a bike before and provide additional options uh, for others to reduce their reliance on automobiles. And with that, we'll turn it over to Jonathan. Thank you very much, Garth. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Jonathan Weinert, and I'm here today to talk to you about how a very simple but powerful transportation innovation, the electric bicycle, uh, is on the brink of a boom, really, in, in California. And Garth, are you um, controlling the slides? Well, you've got a little clicker up here. Oh. Okay, great. Before I begin, um, I'd like to just give you a quick introduction to myself. I come here today to you wearing three hats. One hat, I'm from Bosch. These are our products. We're a supplier in the e-bike industry and uh, we're based in Irvine, California, headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany. That's one hat. The second hat, I come as a researcher of e-bikes. And this picture that you see on the left, that was one of the first e-bikes I ever saw back in 2006 uh, when I started my doctoral research under the guidance of one of your colleagues, actually uh, D Dr. Dan Sperling uh, from ITS Davis. And um, third, third hat that I wear is the e-bike commuter. So uh, the picture on the right, you see, uh, that, that's my rig. And uh, when I'm not commuting to and from work, sometimes I carry precious cargo. <laughs> Cute. Uh, so e-bikes, they've come a long way since 2006. Um, two of the biggest innovations in e-bikes I bring to you today to see. This lithium ion battery is way cheaper, lighter, and lasts longer than they did back in 2006. And the second innovation is pedal assist e-bike technology. This is what you see in between the pedals. And this is what makes e-bikes feel like a regular bicycle. And by the way, they make us, the riders, feel like we're 19 again, which is a nice feeling. Um, <laughs> some e-bikes also have a throttle. But most e-bikes out there on the streets today are pedaled, and thus they preserve the healthy human element of cycling and all the societal benefits that cycling brings. Um, so, why are e-bikes important? Oh, one main reason is they're getting more people out on two wheels. And uh, one example that illustrates this point perfectly, it's from a study that was done in the UK. There you are, Lisa, <laughs> it, it was a study done in the UK by uh, a steer, and it found that, okay, we all know traditional bike share, it's plagued by one key problem. Really, it's, it's the main users are young, fit men. And this study looked at the, this UK bike share system, once it converted from traditional bikes to electric bikes, it actually attracted significantly more women. <laughs> there we go, I like oh, that. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, a little bit more on how people use e-bikes. And I wanna highlight the work from two researchers, John MacArthur from Portland State University and Chris Cherry from University of Tennessee. They've been exploring why people e-bike. And last year, they surveyed 2,000 e-bike owners, and it reveals some really important, interesting findings. First, they found that people use e-bikes for two main reasons, and you'll see it on this slide. They use it as a transportation tool to commute, and they also use it to exercise and recreate. 
They also found that e-bike owners actually ride more often after converting to an e-bike. And you see that in the green bars to the right side compared to the orange bars on the left side. We at Bosch, we conducted our own uh, survey as well, and we found that typically e-bike riders ride about three times more than bicyclists, and they're riding longer distances. Um, most importantly, I think for California and, and mobility, and to the benefit of many of our clogged streets that we travel on to get here, John and Chris found that e-bike trips seem to be replacing car trips most often, roughly 40% of the trips, which you'll see in this chart. So what would you have used if you didn't have your e-bike? So what is this? Um, I also wanted to paint a picture. Okay, we know how people use e-bikes now. Uh, I wanted to give you a sense of what the e-bike market looks like today. And this just shows you that sales in the US, small, uh, 200,000 pieces per year. Um, as a point of comparison, Europe is years ahead of us and they boast nearly 10 times as many sales. And this is in part due to them having much better bicycling infrastructure in their cities. But we're on a we're on a, 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 a path as well, but we're sort of in the initiation phases of market growth. So not surprisingly, okay, that's the e-bike market in the US overall. Let's narrow in on California. Not surprisingly, as you would expect, California again is at the epicenter of a new transportation revolution the e-bikes. And um, we find that e California is the epicenter of the e-bike market in terms of users, but it's also the epicenter of the e-bike industry. And you'll see some names of some of the companies and where they're located. They're mainly e-bike manufacturers or e-bike suppliers. Uh, some of you, if you travel to Sacramento quite a bit, you may have seen the Jump e-bike share that's, that's really popular now. <laughs> Exactly, and they're, they're expanding uh, yeah, quite rapidly. San Francisco, San Diego, Sacramento, and, and more. So, so in summary, why are e-bikes important to California? Uh, I'd like to quote John Burke, who is the CEO of Trek Bicycles, and he often says, and I, I love this analogy, Bicycles, whether they're electric or acoustic, bicycles are a cheap date to solve society's three biggest problems, obesity, climate change, and traffic congestion. Uh, <laughs> Right, and and by the way, by the way, they may may also boost. <laughs> by the way, they they may also boost California's economy as well. It's the um, women of the commission. So, in in short, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention to this topic, and I would also like to thank the California Bike Coalition and uh, Portland State University and University of Tennessee for their help on this presentation. Thank you, and appreciate your questions. Question, yes, I'll go Commissioner Gometti, followed by Commissioner Dunn. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much for the presentation. I, uh, I, I think you guys have come a long way. I think these things are super. <laughs> My question is, is where does an e-bike fit in? And what I mean by that is, you know, in San Francisco where I live, we have uh, scooters, mm -hmm. scoot that, that are running around that are electric. Um, and, and we also have jump, yeah. which are the electric bikes. Um, when you're riding a scooter, you have to wear a helmet. They're, you know, there's safety requirements. They're treated like a car. They drive in the car lanes, et cetera. Uh, an electric bike is not a, a regular bicycle. I ride a regular bicycle around the city, and we have bike lanes, et cetera. Where, where does the electric bike, is it helmet required? Is it going to be required? Do mm. they get to ride in, in uh, the lanes of travel, or do they, I'm kind of confused as to where the electric bike is going to fit into all this. So uh, three years ago, California passed a, a law about e-bikes, and we call it the three-class e-bike law. Class one and two e-bikes, which um, this, this system, Pedal Assist, is class one, um, 20 miles per hour top speed, Pedal Assist. It has all the rights and responsibilities of regular bicycles. Class two. 20 miles per hour top speed, throttle, 
same same deal. It has all the rights to use the bicycle infrastructure that's out there today. Class three goes 28 miles per hour top speed pedal assist, and that's limited. It can't use the same, uh, it can really only use um, street bike lanes. It can't use class one bike paths where you might find many pedestrians or cyclists. So. E-bikes are divided into three types. One type that goes higher speed cannot use all the same bike infrastructure, and you're mandated to wear a helmet as well. I guess I'm wondering how you're going to uh, police that. Right now, it's not policed very... Uh, it, it, it hasn't become... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, it's a new technology. Exactly. I understand that, and we got to. You're going to have to work out the bugs, but exactly. I think until there is a, um, as as I've seen, it, it's not quite policed. Like if there's a class three bike on a bike path, well, we're not talking about the little bird scooters or the lime things that are all over the streets. You know, it, it is different. I get it. Yeah. Commissioner Dunn, are we finished? I'm sorry. Well, I think it's okay. Okay. Commissioner Dunn. Thank you very much for your presentation. So um, three to four hours to charge, that's kind of a long time. Is there technology coming where you can speed up the charge time? What, what are you guys looking at from a... We, we do have a fast charger that just came out in Europe. Uh, it, it speeds up the charge time, but, but keep in mind for three to four hours of charge time, which is about a quarter worth of electricity, of 25 cents, this will take you up to 100 miles. Up to, but it says 20 to 100 miles. 20. If, if, if you're on a, a really high level of assist, then maybe you only get 20. Uh -huh. If you put it in eco mode, where you're just kind of sipping the electricity yeah. and putting in a lot of your own harder. human quad power, then you could get 100, 100 miles. And it depends okay. what kind of road you're traveling on as well, whether it's really steep or flat. Okay, that kind of security of knowing where that range is, that's kind of important, especially for women, so that they don't feel like I gotta sit and wait for someone to pick me up because I can't, I don't have it charged for three to four hours, yeah. It's so, a great point. I mean, you still have to do the, pi the bike, yeah, yeah, exactly. Bike still works, right. Right, uh, right, you can right. still, yeah, you're right. You actually have exactly. to work, right. Worst so case I'm scenario. Trying to, I'm trying to decide, do I buy one of these or do I buy a Vespa, right? You know, uh, so that's the issue. <laughs> okay, yeah, worst case scenario, you pedal home you on pedal your home. own. Yeah. Got it. Make own sure you so live is, downhill. What is the cost for this? What does it, what does it run? Between a thousand dollars for some of the low end, all the way up to six or seven thousand dollars. Like and buying a, a motorcycle. Yeah, some of them have really state-of-the-art, high-end technology. The cost cost of a, of a motorcycle. And I brought three models out. They're at the entrance, so you can kind of see the range from three thousand to about five thousand dollars. Thank you. You're welcome. And do we um, give incentives? Are there ARB incentives for those or? What? Did, no? Linda no. said no. no. Yeah, there, there are not currently incentives. I know, yeah, Cal Bike Coalition is working on that. And just to keep in mind, Europe's way ahead of us on this. UK just started offering incentives for cargo e-bikes to mm -hmm. carry goods or people. Every day is a freight day. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and France is offering, France and Sweden started offering incentives recently and the market's just taken off. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we heard the incentives. L less greenhouse gas, less weight, and less uh, congestion. Well, yeah, but if we want to, yeah. I, I, what more incentives do you need? I think we're going to fight over who Have gets to ride these. That's what you're, you're no, 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 no. I asked if A or B had put money into it, so cap and trade dollars. So. Let's give them some cap and trade money. That that be fine with me. Mr. Arp, I yield the floor to you. Did you have a question? That was it. Oh. Got it all figured out. <laughs> I got it all figured out. Oh, the troops are getting wild here. Commissioner <laughs> Kehoe, thank you. Good, good presentation. Very interesting. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad you're a product of UC Davis. That's a great program. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just one comment back to uh, uh, Commissioner yeah. Dunn. Uh, Range anxiety, I drive a, an electric vehicle, a hybrid, a plug-in, but uh, one thing I do believe, it, it, range anxiety used to bug me a lot, 
Mm -hmm. It was a source of worry. I still ha have some hesitation about a full electric because charging is, uh, can be a challenge even in Southern California. Uh, but the more you use an electric vehicle, your range anxiety goes down. You just mm -hmm. get more familiar with the vehicle, whether it's a hybrid, whether it's full battery, or I imagine even if it's a bike. Uh, and so that's one element, but it does take familiarity. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. And then my, uh, I just, that was just a comment, but I didn't realize they were that expensive. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me when I see all these, uh, orange, um, jump bikes deployed in San Diego, uh, you know, I can walk away from my house and see five or 10 of them between uh, between my house and the restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, how much are those bikes each? Hmm. What are these investments like when they come into a market? Well, it's hard for me to say about the electric bike share bikes because they're built to last years and they're built to, for somebody to throw one and in a dumpster, throw yes. one in a dumpster yes. on the sidewalk. So the, those costs are not comparable to personal, personal use e-bikes. I guess my question would be, uh, if it were the higher, you know, several thousand dollars, that's a really uh, big investment for a company to come into a community. I, I'm I just a little wondering how, how what how what their business plan consists of, if they're if they're uh, putting two or three thousand dollar bikes on every corner. Yeah. So just a point of of reference, um, in New York City, lifts lift slash motivate their e bike share bikes are getting about fourteen trips per day. And if you calculate, I don't know, two to three dollars per trip, they're generating a fair bit of revenue per day, and they probably pay for themselves within, so, I don't, know, maybe less than a year. You're welcome. And by the way, the e-bikes, about the point about range anxiety, all the e-bikes have a special computer on the handlebar where you can see your range real time. And it's just like electric cars today where it knows sort of how you're riding and it'll calculate your estimated range until zero battery. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. We do have one public speaker on this. So Dave Snyder, can you come forward? Thank you. Uh, my name is Dave Snyder. I'm the executive director of the Bicycle Coalition, and Jonathan uh, is too polite to thank himself. So I want to start by thanking Jonathan and Bosch for that excellent presentation, and uh, our staff for uh, Linda Kamushian. And I wanted to emphasize the importance of, of this presentation for you as commissioners in your role uh, uh, with transportation investments. And I'll, and I'll go back to some of yesterday's comments and, and the frankly bad news that we got about the trends in transportation and how difficult uh, we are finding it to reduce vehicle miles traveled and therefore greenhouse gas emissions while maintaining mobility and, and maintaining a strong economy. Um, one of the biggest things that we learned yesterday is um, the drop in transit ridership, which is um, a huge disappointment to a lot of us, except on those transit lines that have a high frequency and are very high quality. We're finding that people take those transit kinds of trips. Uh, so that's where our dollars are going to have to go in transit. We're going to have to invest in fewer lines at very high frequency and very high quality transit. How are we going to get people to those lines? The bike, we know, is uh, a very fantastic way to get people to uh, those trips. And we're finding that when we build the infrastructure to make it safe, people do it. In the Bay Area, at BART stations and at Cal train stations, the number of people who get to those stations by bicycle is, is more than 10% at a handful of stations in those two systems, more than 10%, because a few places have made it safe. And we have to do a lot more of that. You all uh, need to really figure out how you can invest in safe routes to transit so that people can make that trip by bike. It's not just safety, it's also this cultural thing that bicycling is hard, you know, it's, it's, uh, and it is a little bit hard. It's hard. It's not as hard as people think, but it's a little bit hard. And if you have kids to take to school, if you have steep hills, it's practically impossible. E-bikes change that. 
E-bikes completely change that. E-bikes are fun. It's, you feel like you're 19, or if you're, or if you're 50, you feel like you have a stiff tailwind. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, so I, I think that um, for, for you all, I, I, I urge you to consider that, that e-bikes enable California to be like, let's say, uh, Germany, not a too ridiculous comparison, a modern country, uh, where 10% of all trips are by bike. And the benefits to the health and to the economy and to the transportation system in Germany are huge. So I, if you don't think that bicycling can play that role in California, I urge you to reconsider that. And uh, I especially urge you to uh, take a step outside and go for a spin on one of those bikes and see for yourself. Um, thanks uh, very much for inviting us to uh, give this presentation. OK, can I ask Jonathan a question on your chart? Uh, that talked about what these rides were substituting for taking an automobile, and you pointed out 46%, but not right next to that, the column said they were replacing a different bike trip or a walk or another form of uh, or transit, I think. So that um, first column? The, uh, the second column that shows... No, the first, <clears throat> well, it, yeah, if you count the... Had the descriptor is the first column, the next column over. Can we pull that slide up real fast? I know we're out of time and we've got to cede this facility to others shortly. It was trips replaced by e-bikes as the heading of the slide. Yeah, it, and it refers to the trip we asked, or Chris and John asked um, e-bike owners, the, for the trip that they're thinking about, what would they have taken right. had they not had their e-bike? And I believe the slide shows that 40% of the trips represented, um, the alternative would have been automobile. So a it's 46%. A, a 40, it's a 40%. Or, sorry, sorry, or percentage of VMT, yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, it's just that um, a lot of people naturally would have gone on a regular bike uh, had they not had the e-bike. Uh, that that is that that is understandable. What's what surprised me in that data was that uh, as many as I think it's forty six percent would have taken a car. Right. Okay. Okay. I just thought forty, and we're looking at declining transit ridership. So I was trying to drill down and learn a little more. But the other thing in that chart, which if, if if I may, excuse me, just to draw your attention to, is that the average distance of that typical trip is nine miles, which was a high number to me, uh, that the, the, the median, uh, or I get the mean, or I don't know which it is, um, car trip that it's replacing is a nine mile trip. So we're not talking about one to two mile trips. We're talking about serious transportation impact. Okay. Well, we'll probably want to drill down with you and understand a little more of the information we're learning. So yes, Chair Frazier. Just wanted to, to access, the, yesterday, pursuant to our, our co-meeting, we talked about technology uh, taking forefront and, and investing in it. This would be a great opportunity when we look at the investment that the Air Board does with the e-vehicles, e uh, you know, the incentive programs, I think up to like $35,000. This would be something that would be absolutely paramount to, to invest in as first and last mile is accomplished. And so you look at the differential that what it does is I think this is probably a good bill idea that going out forward and, and making sure the technology is embraced and that alternate transportation is being embraced and going forward. So, you know, look forward to working with you. But I think that the Air Board, this is a perfect opportunity for their incentive program. Yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, Commissioner Medaffer. Just real briefly, I just want to say this is outstanding. I mean, these are the kind of things, just as Chair Fraser just said, I use, you know, when Jump came to San Diego, I use that thing all the time. I like the e-bike. It's easier to use. The app works. Everything is so good about it. And you, you get around. And the one stat I remember hearing, I don't know the exact number, but it was something like with Uber, uh, something like 40 or 50% of all of their rides are like two miles or less in cars. So if those can be replaced with scooters and e-bikes, you're taking a two to 4,000 pound vehicle off the road, you're eliminating GHG, it's really a win-win for uh, that, and it improves active transportation. 
It's something that definitely the commission should be advocating. Okay. Alrighty, thank you very much. This is fascinating. We'll be out to take a look. So, okay, we're going to move to item 27. Terry, please. Okay. Um, and to my husband who's watching today, yes, I want an e bike for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all say that to our Santa. <laughs> Commissioners, item number 27 is an informational item, and Ellen Greenberg, the Deputy Director for Caltrans Office of Sustainability, will be providing an update on the Zero Emission Vehicle Program. Hi, I guess uh, it's time to say good evening. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for your attention. I know we're at the close of the day, and it's been a very full uh, two days, soon to be a full three days. Uh, this is an update. We're going to be returning to a few of the topics that we discussed uh, last time I spoke with you about the Department's Dev program, which was over.